You're listening to Release Your Resistance with Bex Beltran, episode 76. Welcome to Release Your Resistance. This is Bex. The only reason why any of us don't have what we want in life is because of our own resistance. Right now, I'm learning how to recognize and release my resistance, and this podcast tells you how you can release your resistance so that you can live the exact life that you want. Let's get started. Today's episode is something a little bit different again, and in fact, I thought it maybe was completely off from our topic of release your resistance, but luckily, we were able to tie it in. So for today, I'm so happy to welcome back my friend and astrological advisor, Sheridan Capriseca. We wanted to talk together and share our conversation with you all about Mercury in retrograde. Do you know what this is? Do you know that we have been in a Mercury in retrograde cycle for the past few weeks? So listen to our conversation, hear all of her expert information about it. And enough for me, let's just get right into the episode. All right. Welcome back, Sheridan. I'm so excited you decided to join us on this podcast again for a little Merc Retro discussion. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, but if we're both being honest, are we both really doing great? Because we are currently in <laughs> Mercurian retrograde. So how has this couple weeks been for you? Um, I mean, I would always want to stay positive, yes. but if being honest, this Mercury retrograde cycle has been a struggle. Even compared to other Mercury retrogrades, this one has been rough, which I actually think I may know why. Like I okay. have... Um, an idea why Mercury is actually retrograding through its home sign of Gemini right now. Um, so I think it's exemplified and amplified it and made it even more Mercury retrograde-ish. Okay. Even more. Yeah, that explains everything to me in my mind. But actually, let's just back up too, because hopefully there are people listening who aren't as you know, who don't know about this. And one of the inspirations for this week's podcast was I was talking with someone earlier about Mercury in retrograde. And she was like, well, what is it exactly? And I was like, um, I don't know exactly. But <laughs> <laughs> So do you have kind of just like a, a basic 101 uh, definition or explanation for someone who's not in the astrology know? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So Mercury retrograde actually happens about two to three times in a year. And it's when the planet Mercury moves backwards versus forward motion as planets normally do. Sometimes they go retrograde, though. So when Mercury retrograde happens, basically, it kind of can cause um, chaos for us. Mm. It affects the realms of technology, contracts, communication, commitments, even, you know, interpersonal relationships. Um, So when it's in retrograde, it can kind of cause those things to go haywire. So mistakes happen, frustrations happen, balls get dropped, you know, things aren't completed, or technology just randomly decides to stop working. Or, you know, it's kind of like a time period of Murphy's law. What can go wrong will go wrong Mm. in those realms. Um, And like I said, this past one has been a doozy for sure. At least for me. Hopefully not bad for you. (laughs) No, I, I mean, I don't know if it's just because I'm more aware of it because also when this one that we're currently in and, and this episode is airing on Friday the 18th, and I think this uh, retrograde is over next week, right? Yeah. We're almost through it. Right. Um, But this cycle that we're currently in, I remember when it started a few weeks ago, was it right around the beginning of June? Do you know? Uh-huh. Yep. I think and it was it, like June 4th. Yeah. And it was right around the time of a full moon as yes. well as an eclipse too. Yes. Yes. So it's been a really interesting astrological past couple weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, throwing Mercury retrograde in the mix of all those other things. And what's interesting about eclipses is you'll have two back to back. They're not right back to back, like the day to day, you know, one mm-hmm. day to another back to back, but you'll have a, a lunar eclipse and then it will be followed by a solar eclipse okay. um, within a few weeks time. So that's often called in astrology, 
quote unquote eclipse season, which is a time of a lot of transformation, you know, quick endings that mm. set up new beginnings or it's, it's eclipses are transformations. Um, but yes, to throw in our good pal Mercury retrograde in that mm. also uh, is it's an interesting time for sure. Yeah. Are we currently in eclipse season or was the eclipse at the beginning of June, the signal of the end of it? So we just had, I believe, the second eclipse. Okay. So we're past that. Okay, we, we're we past that. Our eclipse season for now. Okay. But yes, I have been feeling it. And because I was hyper aware because of the, you know, the people talking about all these astrological events kind of happening kind of in a little cluster, I was maybe more hyper aware of it than I have been for previous seasons. And so I've been saying everything that's happening to me. I've just been thanking Mercury for it. And I've had some crazies like I had bank (laughs) online banking problems, you know, and I've had, um, I can't get my podcasts to play in my car from my phone, you know, just things that I, I mean, I do them all the time. They're normal everyday events. And now suddenly they're not working. Right, right. No, Mercury can definitely lead to that as well. Like that's case in point, online banking transactions. It definitely sounds like Mercury could be behind that. Um, and like you said, it could be you're more heightened. So you're looking at it. I feel oh. often too, maybe I'm like, Oh yeah, this is Mercury retrograde, but definitely have felt it. I definitely, and it, like I said, it happens a few times a year and it will retrograde into different signs. So, but it's in its home sign right now, which is why I think it's making it a little extra strong. Mm-hmm. Um, And what's interesting too, something that I was going to mention earlier that I forgot, another really interesting part of Mercury retrograde is it's kind of like the X time. So I don't know if you've seen the jokes online where it's like, oh, your ex texted you, hey, how's it going? Most likely during a Mercury retrograde if you haven't talked for like months and then they text you out of the blue. And it's a time where people often feel very nostalgic looking towards the past or they'll have extreme, and I have had this, very extreme and vivid dreams about an ex or an, not even a romantic partner, but maybe right. a friend you don't talk to anymore or an ex-work situation or something behind you in the past. It's a season of n- uh, nostalgia, looking mm-hmm. back, going over things again. Yeah. That is crazy. And I'm so glad you added that because when you were talking about the ex, I was like, well, you know, I don't have any, anything like that except for like maybe a dream. And then you're like, and it's maybe a dream. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> crazy. Yeah. It's really, really interesting uh, how it can affect those kinds of things. And I think uh, the statement of being in retrograde, like Mercury retrograde, yes, can cause technological breakdowns and frustrations, miscommunications, but there's a positive side to it too. It's definitely a time of review. Like it's not a time, you'll often hear it's not a time to sign major contracts. It's not a time to start a new job necessarily. Of course it can be, of course. Yeah. But it's a time to review and ex- exercise additional caution um, and really review your current situation. Where do you want to go? Take a pause, review past decisions that have led you to your current life, like current things in your life, and really pause and review before you move forward. Mm, yes. And that is one of the things that I wanted to talk about uh, because I was wondering, like, here we are kind of at the tail end of this cycle and maybe people listening haven't heard of this or considered or thought about it before. And also maybe people are listening right now and being like, I'm just not into it. I don't get it. I don't believe in it. Um, But I, I did think just like you mentioned and brought up, there are probably some hidden silver linings or some benefits that all of us could use whether or not we're in, you know, it's mercury and retrograde or not. So I was thinking if we do, believe in it and we do follow it and we do track it, what should we do for the next one and how can we prepare ourselves or what can we expect or, you know, what kinds of actions or activities do we want to do? And then if we don't believe in it and it's all just like, whatever, these are just good things probably to do periodically anyhow. And if we want to align it with the schedule of Mercury, that's fine, (laughs) but we don't have to. So you were saying it's a good time to pause yeah, yeah, review. absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. so uh, that question of what to do maybe for the next time or how to easily migrate through it. Um, and it's 
perfect for this podcast because it really is kind of a situation of giving into Mercury or giving into mm. Murphy's Law. Mm-hmm. And the more you fight, the more you struggle, the more you resist, the wow. more the more technological breakdowns you'll have or just miscommunications you'll have or just frustration around or wacky things happening. The more mm-hmm. you resist and struggle and don't go with the flow, um, the more that that can happen. And then, in my opinion, at least. And then, um, so really being aware of why you're feeling that, what you're feeling, what is it bringing about in you? Why are you feeling like you need to review these specific things? And what areas are you having these kind of wacky miscommunications or mishaps? That's often a place in your life where you, you know, could do a little bit more investigation and uncover what you do need to review. Mm -hmm. Um, Mercury brings that to light for you kind of in its retrograde season. So release your resistance to Mercury accept okay. that you're going to go through it and whatever it shows to you that you could be uncovering a little bit more in the, you know, it's showing to you where you have these little wacky mishaps. That's an area you can focus to review and reflect. So helpful. So good. So I was kind of Googling around a little bit uh, before we got on this call and I found a list um, and I haven't even, I didn't even like click the link. I'm just still on the Google search page, you know, so I didn't Uh even go into the source, but it says an exhaustive list of what not to do (laughs) during Mercury. So we just talked about what to do and what, how to manage and how to make it through what not to do. And I want to hear your uh, reaction or additional comments about any of these. Hold off on signing any contracts. What do you think? Yes. Oh, I definitely think that's a huge one. Okay. And I will play the skeptic here on the other (laughs) side of it. And I will say we have a friend in common who is an amazing real estate agent. And she has had a pretty good couple of weeks during Mercury. Wouldn't she say? Like she's out of contracts. Yeah. So I, I, and and we don't know the behind the scenes. We don't know if there were technical glitches or, or, you know, holdups or anything like that. But I would say we, I think going through this list, I'm not trying to create fear in anyone or, you know, make anyone feel like, Oh my goodness, (laughs) this was already scheduled. I'm, I'm saying probably there are two sides to this, but also the list on the internet said, you know, hold off on signing any contracts. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> uh, well, it must be true then. Um, right. no, but uh, I think I love the way that you describe that because I agree. I've, and yes, absolutely. If something is in process and you've been moving towards it and like the example with the real estate friend, 100% move forward. You don't need to stop it because Mercury is in retrograde, mm. of course. But just take an extra second to pause and really yeah. review that contract. Or or it couldn't even – it doesn't necessarily mean that there's going to be massive errors in the contract. Like the way I think of it is, is just expect maybe delays. Or if there's other parties to that real estate transaction, maybe they're delayed. Maybe they mm. have a mishap. Like the, the, it's just – different parties can be into play, but absolutely continuing to live your life, especially if you have a contract already in process. So I agree with you on that, yeah. but take an extra pause. If okay. to play. Which is probably just good advice in any astrological event at any oh, time. Totally. Right. Oh, totally. Because And the next one was a good um, segue from what you just said about, you know, be prepared for delays of, of maybe other people. So the next thing was um, be prepared for traffic and other travel mishaps. Mm, Have yes. you experienced that at all? Or do you know anything about that? during? Yes. yes. So it hasn't actually happened to me, but I did have a friend one time where um, she had this trip planned and she booked it before Mercury went into retrograde, but it was during Mercury retrograde the day before the flight comes and they changed her flight time twice in a day, like 24 mm. hours before they moved it back two hours each time. Well, then the morning of she gets there and they just completely cancel her flight in general. Then they, you know, she's obviously upset at the airport yeah. kind of stranded. And then, so then they get her on a connecting flight or, you know, something later on the airport makes it right. That's great. Yeah. Then she's on her vacation. It was fast, maybe three days. They canceled her flight home. <laughs> oh my goodness. I shouldn't <laughs> laugh. This is terrible. But yeah, I'm- <laughs> <totally>. <laughs> right. So of course she made it home and all was well, but yes. I mean, that definitely happened during Mercury retrograde and it pertains to travel mishaps. Well, and here's my other secret to liking knowing about Mercury and retrograde is because, because that happened during that time period, she could chalk it up to Mercury and not have to be like, 
oh, I'll never fly that airline again, or I'll never visit that destination again. She could just be like, oh, well, you know, and I think that kind of removes maybe some of our, for me, at least maybe some of our own personal judgment or biases, you know, if we can just say, oh, well, it was the planets. What are we going to do? Right. Right. And it's funny actually too, like you're saying the positive side, it's literally like during these time periods, I'll often be like, if something frustrates me or something that's not going the way I want, I'll be like, oh, Mercury retrograde. But it can literally, <laughs> it can literally be like, you know, you're cooking something and you burn it. Of yeah. course, Mercury didn't cause that. But, I'll, you know, it well, is kind of fun to, yes. you know, I agree. I with like it. having a scapegoat, a non-human exactly. scapegoat, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mercury feelings most likely won't get hurt through. <laughs> I, yes, maybe not. I am starting to see now, um, especially through this conversation, a much more of a positive reason for believing in it and for following it and for adhering to the, you know, the guidance, because the next point of uh, advice was stay away from rigidity, which I think is good advice at any point, right? Right. <laughs> right. Especially, especially during Merc- Mercury and retrograde, if we don't want to be caught up in delays or technical glitches, Let's just stay away from rigidity. Let's just let things yeah. go. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I think that's great advice at multiple times, always. Be more open. Go with the flow. Absolutely. Okay, cool. Now, here's one. I don't know what this means at all, and I'm putting you on the spot. I don't know if you will know what it means, but it says avoid mercurial emotions. Oh, so yes. Merc- well, okay. This is also extremely interesting. Just a little bit of background info. So Mercury is the planet of Gemini, which is the symbol of Gemini are the twins because okay. not in a necessarily bad way. Gemini's have the two people. They're the right. twins. So mm-hmm. it's a little bit like one face, one face, one mm. emotion, one emotion, and they can be very mercurial and jump back and forth. So I take that to be don't um, rush to conclusions and then, you know, have to backtrack because you, you know what I mean? Or don't be mercurial where you may speak not the truth or don't be mercurial where you could be, you know, like want to gossip or things like that, if that makes sense. Yes. Again, good advice for any time. hundred percent. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of like, am I hearing correctly? Maybe we could even stretch it to say like, don't be two faced. Don't be a flip flopper. Yes. Take yes. the extra time to decide on your answer before you answer so you don't have to backtrack. A hundred percent. That last part, that's a great way to put it. A hundred percent agree with that. Nice. Okay, good. Wow, this has been very interesting, very helpful, I think. Again, not only during this period, but for any period. What do you advise people who are now aware of this or maybe now more in tune for it and they're thinking, okay, I got to get this on my calendar. I got to know when the next Mercury in retrograde is happening so that I don't sign a contract or rely (laughs) on technology. How do you recommend people get a little bit more information or stay in the know? Yeah, absolutely. So there's a lot of online resources where you can search when the next upcoming Mercury retrograde is. It's honestly on a cycle of almost every five to six months. Um, Sometimes, you know, sometimes you'll have three in a year. uh, So it'd be under five to six months, but kind of it goes on that cycle, but you could always search online. And then if you're like, oh, it's coming up in a few months, I want to prepare. You could put it on your calendar to just remember, you know, don't be rigid, be more go with the flow, you know, um, take that time to really review and reflect and allow what's going to happen to happen so that you, when it's over, you can move forward full steam, take action. You've had a review period during the retrograde, you know how you want to take action going forward. Um, so I don't think it's anything to be like, I got to put it on my calendar because I'm afraid my car is going to break down or something like that. Not at all. But I think that um, to, you know, put it on your calendar to remember to go with the flow. As you said, it's always really good advice. And it's also fun. Like I said, if you're having a frustrating day or life is being as life can be, sometimes it is, you can be like, Oh, it's Mercury retrograde. Just like you Perfect. said. Yes. I, and I, you know what, I'll just call it. I'll just give us all permission. No matter what, <laughs> wherever Mercury is, you could always blame Mercury on anything. <laughs> Let's just do it. Why not? But I did look it up just while we were talking, just in case someone wants to just hear it. it according to, again, my source, which is Google, it's September 27th is the next one coming up. Oh, dang. So, so it is a little bit, uh, yeah, like that's, it's coming. So we could prepare. Yeah. So we might want to kind of think about what's going on at the end of September. That one will actually last through October 17th. 
Mm, so we've got okay. a couple of weeks there to kind of just be a little bit more pause, a little bit more aware, a little bit more open, a little bit more reflective. And I think that's good. It's a good reminder for anyone at any time. Agreed. Time. Yeah. Agreed. A hundred percent agreed. And what's interesting too is as Mercury retrograde approaches, there's something two weeks before called the shadow period, which it like it kind of happens to prepare people going into Mercury retrograde that you'll start to notice maybe some changes or, in, you know, different things like that. But the two weeks after Mercury retrograde are an amazing time to move forward. It's like the equivalent of a new moon. It's a time oh. for action and full steam ahead, like I said, lots of energy and excitement. That is the best news ever because that's what we're about to have next week. So if anyone's listening to this in real time in June, uh, we are about to start a period of, what did you say? It's, um, it's action, just post- action, yeah, yeah, action, and, action and productivity or a, a new moon kind of a vibe. Yes, exactly. Yes. This is super exciting. Uh, so good things are ahead after our really bumpy Mercury retrograde. And like I said, it's been really bumpy for me. So if anyone else is having a really bumpy Mercury retrograde, I feel ya. Um, but at least we only have till next week. Yes. So good. Well, thank you again. Maybe we'll have you back in September before the next retrograde to talk about shadow, because that was so new for me just now on this call. I didn't know anything about it. So maybe we want to do a little bit of shadow work yeah. um, before we uh, go into our next retrograde cycle. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining again today. This was so entertaining and educational and helpful. And I really, really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me on your podcast. I always love talking to you. So this this is awesome. And yeah, just thank you. I had a great time. Me too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. What an amazing conversation. I always learn something new when I talk with Sheridan and we always have so much fun. So Sheridan, thank you again for sharing all of your knowledge and your enthusiasm about astrology. If you want to leave a question or comment, and I will get it over to Sheridan, you can just go to the show notes for this episode at bexb.org slash mercury. Talk to you later. This has been Release Your Resistance. Thank you for listening. If you like this podcast, make sure you're subscribed and leave a review on Apple Podcasts. Also, think about someone who you know who would love this episode and share it with them. There should be a share button on your app if you're listening to this on your phone. If you'd like to continue this conversation one-on-one or in real time, come visit me on my site at bexbead.org to see how we can work together. 